Welcome to Good Groceries with Tiffany. So I know you guys have been missing me. I was on a little bit of break, but today <laughs> we have an easy recipe for you for Thanksgiving. It's our family's dressing recipe and my mom, it's her really, she's famous for it. Aren't you? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> The word famous, all right, I'll wear it. <laughs> okay, it's really, really good. So this is my mom, Pal, everybody, P-A-L, and she'll tell you how she got that name a little bit later. You ready okay. to cook? I'm ready, let's go. All right, let's go. All right, so we are making a traditional Southern style poultry dressing. Now you can make this with turkey or you can make it with chicken. Today, we're making it with chicken. And here's all of our snazzy ingredients or as some would call accoutrement. <laughs> um, so mom, tell us a little bit about this dressing. This is a dressing that I just, listen, I don't have a recipe. Mm -hmm. What I have is my mama and my grandma in my head and in my heart. Mm -hmm. Now what you're going to do is take this and put it on paper. Yes ma'am. So people can uh, cook it. it. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna watch you put it on paper. <laughs> Okay, so what are we starting with? What do we have here? What is this? That, this cornbread that's crumbled. Good cornbread, must have really good cornbread. And then uh, Miss Covington's uh, stuffing because she uses some seasons that I don't know anything about, but once I tried it, I was told about it. And once I tried it, it just gives a little mm to the dressing. And I like that mm that it gives. So I use this all the time now. Okay, so now people when they say when you say good cornbread some people think good cornbread is jiffy mix oh no not never not never <laughs> <laughs> so this is cornbread get corn cornbread from scratch from in scratch. an iron skillet because you're going to get that little crust yes ma'am so this is cornbread from scratch okay and we have about eight cups of crumbled cornbread here and we're going to add it to our baking dish and the reason we're using a, a tin foil or aluminum foil baking dish is because we're gonna just pop this in the freezer and have it already ready for Thanksgiving, right? Yes. So this is, this is one of our make ahead dishes. So let's get started. But we are gonna cook it today, right? Yes, ma'am, okay. we're gonna cook it today because you, you know we're gonna taste it on camera. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right, so here we go. So we're gonna go ahead and we'll just dump this in here because it's already pre-measured. So uh -oh, we made a little mess, that happens in the kitchen. All right, so we have about eight cups here of our crumbled cornbread. And then you see there's some, some pieces. You see this here? This is that crust she's talking about that you can only get when you have a cast iron skillet. So we wanna kind of crumble up those bigger pieces. We don't, we don't want that in there, right? Well, they'll crumble up when they get juicy. They will? Okay, mm -hmm. so, all right, you the boss. Okay, I'm, I'm not the boss, I'm learning <laughs> as I go here. And so we're gonna use, what do you, how much you think about this, about a cup? Yeah, for that pan. For this size pan, about a cup of seasoned cornbread mix from Mrs. Cubison's. Maybe a couple, maybe a half a cup more? Yeah, yes. Okay, so then, so like one and a half cups of that for this size pan. Now, if you're making one of those large chafer pans, which is literally two of these side by side, then you could use possibly a whole bag of the Mrs. Cubison's. All right, now do we mix this up before we add our veggies? No, 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 we're gonna just all do in one mix. One mix, okay. We have one cup of diced onion and it's a fine dice. You don't want chunks and you don't, I think I remember you saying something about the chopper. You didn't like using the chopper. What happens with the chopper, with the vegetables? Oh. It's too big, it's, the, the, it's the, too big. It comes out too big. But yeah, something, so. I heard you something say, say it makes it too juicy or something like that. No, I don't think so. <laughs> we don't. But know. I'm, you know, so, so you have to remember, I don't use machines. Right. And so I'm just used to a knife mm -hmm. and my hand. And, my, and, and we go. All right. Okay. Okay. I'll just dump it all in there. Okay. We trying to be cute. We're not being cute. We, mm -mm. Mm -mm. We're just dumping it all in there. Yeah. So that's one cup of onion, friends. All right. And we have one cup of green bell pepper. Again, a fine dice, fine dice. Gonna put that in there, and so pretty, and it smells so good. Sometimes I wish we had smell of vision so that you could smell it. And this is one cup of a fine dice celery. 
See, the ingredients are easy. And this is the first time I've used it with the measurements because I just go eyesight and, and from my heart. And from so, your heart. Yeah, stir child. And so I've had to watch my mom make this so that I could learn how to make it because she said, I don't have a recipe. You just have to watch me do it. And so we're just gonna toss this. My hands are clean. It's easier to do it with your hands than it is with a spoon. Right? Mm-hmm. So make sure you get all the cornbread mixed up together. If you feel more comfortable mixing it okay. in a bowl, then you can do that too. Yeah. Okay, let's start putting the seasoning in. Put, putting the seasoning in. So here are the three seasonings and nothing but the seasonings. So help you seasonings. Yes. Do you put garlic in your dressing? But not never. Not Why? Never. That's a whole different taste. I will. You know, some people do that. But garlic mm -hmm. does not belong in dressing. Never. What belongs in dressing? Sage. Rubbed sage. Rubbed sage. So you see Pepper. that. See, this is not powdered sage. This is rubbed sage. You see the texture is a little bit different. The flavor is actually more intense and it tastes better than powdered sage. And then we have, what is this? Black pepper. Black pepper. And then what is this? Seasoning salt. Seasoning salt. That's it. You can just use plain salt if you want to. Yeah, yes, you can use plain I salt. I mean, I just graduated to seasoning salt after I tasted, you know, mm -hmm. but mama used just plain salt and pepper. Okay. But we can't update such a girl. Put it in there. <laughs> you don't want me to be cute? No, <laughs> just put it in there, dump it. So tell us about your mama. How did you get your name, pal? Oh, well, the story goes, when I was born, we lived in the country, of course, and so when I was born, my brother, baby, mm -hmm. he um, had a doll named Pal, mm -hmm. and he came to the bed when I was first born mm -hmm. and asked my mama, could I be his pal? And she said, yes. So they said he went to the field and buried his doll, <laughs> <laughs> and I became his pal. And so he taught me, he potty trained me. I went everywhere he went. I became his pal until he died. And I was his pal. He took very good care of me. Aww, that's Even though we had to fight a lot. And I was into a lot of fist fights with him, you know. <laughs> and I would steal his marbles and go shooting marbles and stuff. Cause I, didn't, I had three brothers. I didn't play any girl games. I played all boy games with my brothers. I was raised with the wolves. Mm. But it was a good time. Because in the wintertime, I couldn't go outside, so I would be in the kitchen watching my mama and grandma. But not in the summer. We were out and about. I mean, we were out. Time it got daylight, we were gone. So did, they, did, your, did your mother and your grandmother make this dressing the same way? Same way every time. Really? No, no, no change. Uh, the, the, um, sometimes we'd go to turkey, mm -hmm. duck, mm -hmm. or hens. Mm -hmm. You know, they mm -hmm. used hens for the dressing because they said the hens had more flavor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, old girls, hey, the older the girl is, the more flavor she got. Ah! <laughs> and that's the truth. Well, all right then. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. So hens make the best dressing. Okay. But uh, they would use the same thing with duck, turkey. Because on the farm, we had all that stuff. Oh, wow. Yeah. My mom even would use uh, beef. She would make beef mm -hmm. and make a dressing to go with the beef. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was so good. Now, did you eat like cranberry sauce and stuff like that growing up? No, we had pear preserves. Pear I didn't preserves. know anything about cranberries until we moved to California. When I moved to California, we had pear preserves for Thanksgiving and Homemade. Christmas. Homemade pear preserves is what we use for the sweet part. Oh, wow. Delicious. Now, I remember you telling me a story about celery when you were a kid. Oh, I didn't like celery. I didn't even like to smell it. So my mother would always make me an extra pan of dressing without celery. See? I mean, I just had that kind of mom and grandma. Spoiled. Because I was the only girl. Spoiled. Three brothers. Spoiled. I don't know anything about being spoiled. It was just a way of life. <laughs> <laughs> All right, friends. And what? Not yet. Not yet. No, no. we just lay that in after you have made the dressing. We just lay the chicken in. Just lay the chicken in. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So let's put some some juice in here. Let's put some stock in here. So let's put this oh, over that's here. Right. Stock is not juice. Stock. <laughs> <laughs> chicken stock. Chicken broth. Whatever you have. We the, call it a liquor. Pot liquor. Pot liquor. <laughs> so this is the juice from or stock from. From boiled chicken. So we boiled the chicken so we could get a nice, rich, hearty broth. And you see that fat that's sitting on top of there? We want that fat. Yeah, we do. We want that fat. You don't You don't want no boiled chicken breast. You want something that's going to yield you fat. So I would suggest you boil a whole chicken. Yes. 
Now, if you don't, because you know, I always kind of like to um, help people who may not have. So if you don't have a kitchen space where you can boil a whole chicken or you don't have a pot. Or you don't have we, a kitchen then. Uh, well, some people don't. Oh, really? And if you don't have it where you can boil a whole chicken or you don't have a pot big enough to boil a whole chicken, you can boil chicken pieces or you can use canned stock or canned broth. So if you don't have, listen, she's like, no. Okay. I mean, <laughs> hey, you know, this is what, 20, 20, 20, you know, so people do stuff. The Bible said, give us this day our daily bread. So the bread changes every day. So, you know, let's do this bread today. Okay. And if you don't have it, improvise, you know, I mean, because yeah, we know how to do that. Yes, Shh. we do. We Black do. folks can take dirt and make lemonade. Right. That's the truth. You see my mama's earrings, they say, I am Black excellence and honey. Yes, she okay. is. Okay, let's go. All right, let's go. So this is about a, a half a cup ladle. So we're going to just ladle in a half a cup at a time. Oh, take some more. Have some more. Uh -oh. Oh, yeah, be careful there. More. See, because you want it juicy enough that you can cook this dressing. Okay. We didn't saute the veggies before. Because you're okay. losing too much flavor. Yeah. So what you want to do is cook this dressing for 45 minutes to an hour, mm -hmm. which is going to cook all of the, the veggies. Mm -hmm. And they're going to be really soft. And all those flavors, okay, stop. Now stir. Okay. So you don't want you don't want the, the flavor of the bell pepper and the onion and the celery in the skillet. You want it in, in the, the dressing. The, hello. So you put enough broth so that it's going to... Um, bake. It's going to bake and it's going to... Um, cook the vegetables in yes the, okay so we're gonna taste this friends before we put it in the start oven. putting your, your seasoning in i so put you, the seasoning remember we had it in the bowl oh that's right we don't that's right that's because you're measuring oh lord yes <laughs> <laughs> see i just go dump dump and then taste and dump dump and then taste yeah so yeah we started out with about um about three teaspoons of seasoning salt, two okay, teaspoons some more, of some more uh, more broth. Broth. Okay. For stock. We had mm -hmm. about two teaspoons of pepper, and about three teaspoons of rubbed sage. So that was what we started with, and we'll go ahead and taste as you go. As we go to just make sure that that was enough. And then you know you can do it to taste. If you're not a sage person, then use a little bit of sage. Okay. Stir. Stir. But you have to use some sage, or this is that's not my mama's dressing. That's your own dressing. <laughs> that's not the Rush family dressing. It's in your tongue. It's in your tongue. Your heart and your head. That's where it is. It actually that's what you cook with anyway. That's yeah. where all the recipes came from anyway. Your head and your stomach and your desire and the foods that you had available to you. Mm-hmm. Yep. And love. So much love. Okay, you can put some more. Because you want to have enough juice in the um, stock in there to... You can call it juice. Oh, go ahead. Uh, like okay. word. You have enough juice in there to cook it for an hour or 45 for an minutes hour. to an hour. Yeah. And so but what will happen if they don't put enough juice? Because we have some people that have never dry. cooked before. It's going to be, too, be dry. too dry. Okay. So let's add some more stock. We'll go ahead and just maybe what add the rest of that. Yeah. Stop, stop, stop. Okay. So you see this, friends? You want it to be the consistency of, what would you say that is, like oatmeal? I don't know. I can't compare oatmeal to dressing. That's not <laughs> in my head. <laughs> you know? So for purposes of my friends out there, maybe have never made dressing. Mm -hmm. or So I would say, you guys, so you see, see the texture of this? It is very moist. So this is probably the texture of, of oatmeal. That's what you're looking for when you're stirring and mixing your ingredients together. Okay, now you need to taste. Now we need to taste. Let me get a fork let's, over here. Let's, um, all right. So we'll take our, our little, and we'll... Let's see what you think. Mm. <laughs> I'm going to just sneak a little bit out of here. That's good. It sure is. Girl. Mm, mm, mm. I 
I can. I've use never it. measured it before. Mm hmm. But you want it to taste the same every time. So Give me a little I've, more. I've gotten used to measuring so that stuff tastes the same every time. So I've, I've tried to kind of do that with the way I cook, especially so that my kids could repeat the recipe, especially when they grow up and they're gone and they want to make something that they're that's familiar to them as you know when they were kids. Keep stirring. Keep stirring. When I'm making it, mm -hmm. you just kind of let that sit there for a minute. See, see what? Hold up. See, I'm gonna. Here's the the special part. Okay. Uh, So you can keep on talking, Tiffany, but I have to get to the real deal over here. Okay, she went to the 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 iron skillet of cornbread that we made earlier. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So you can keep on talking, Jim, what you're doing. Okay. So she told me to keep stirring it because you want to keep stirring the flavors together to make sure everything is homogenous and married and together. Everything is on one accord in the pan. But see, there is no way that you can cook a pan of cornbread mm -hmm. and not have cornbread and milk. Mm -hmm. And so while you're eating your cornbread and milk, your dressing is just kind of sitting there, mm -hmm. right, coming together. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, Lord Jesus, and this is the best part, hot cornbread and milk. Mm -mm -mm. This is what I grew up on eating when we were kids. We would have cornbread and milk for breakfast, for dinner, for lunch. It's so good, but it's it's better when you have fresh homemade cornbread from scratch. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's why you have to do it when you're making your dressing. Oh, okay. You treat yourself. <laughs> okay. And when the kids come by, mm -hmm. they just go to the stove and get them a bowl. And that's all the part of Thanksgiving. So I've stirred this. Now taste it for your taste. Taste it for my taste. Got some plastic forks so we can discard after we taste. I might put a tad more seasoning salt. Do you think feel the same way? I think you need a little more of everything. A little more of everything. All right. So see, this is where you, where your personal stuff comes. Don't use that big opening. Oh yeah, you put it in your hand. Oh, I don't ever do that. <laughs> What's that? That's the sage. Yep, this is. The oh sage. yeah, I put the sage in my hand. Yes. Okay, so about that much. That looks like about a, a teaspoon more. Yes, I'll go with that. All right, we're gonna rub it. Back up. I'm gonna put that part back in there. That's enough. That's enough. Right. Now, black pepper is your friend. Black pepper. Mm-hmm. It brings a lot of flavor to your dressing. Okay, so that's about a half a, little a teaspoon. More. Okay. So about a teaspoon mm -hmm. more, maybe. Yes. A little more seasoning salt. A little more seasoning salt. So when I re-season with seasoning salt, I just do a light sprinkling over the top of whatever it is I'm cooking, and that mm -hmm. usually is enough. Okay. Stir it, and I'll have some more of cornbread, cornbread and milk. milk. Jesus. <laughs> it's the best. I don't care. You know, you can be sick, and this will set your, set your life and your health right. <laughs> You see all this fat that's gathering up around the edges from the... Um, that's what's going to make it rich. That's going to make it rich and good. Okay. Make sure you stir it well. Put me some in here. Oh, see, when I taste, I want to taste it. You want to taste? You put some more in the bowl for me. Okay. I'll get a nice, another good stir. Okay. Okay, so let's gather that. Here, I'll put some in there. Okay. <laughs> because you want to taste it, you want to taste it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you can absolutely taste this, friends, because everything in here is cooked but the vegetables. There's no raw eggs in here. And yeah, that's it. That's really good. That's going to be all right, friends. All right. That would make you slap your dead grandma. Oh, <laughs> not your dead grandma. <laughs> your dead grandma. Because she'd be in your heart, right? Oh. Your grandma, grandma, woo! Oh, that's so good. Okay. Mm -hmm. I had a sweet grandma. She's 
She lived to be 102. Yeah. Walking, talking, seeing, hearing. And her philosophy on life is she told us every day, mm -hmm. get up every day and treat everybody right. Mm. I mean, it's just that simple. It's just get up simple. every day and treat everybody right. Mm. I'm grateful to come from such stock. She was a praying woman too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Prayed all the time. She was in the hospital. She said, where's my apron? <laughs> <laughs> yep. She had her apron and her snuff. I remember you used to tell us stories about her, how she could tell somebody's character, and she would never even look at them. She just listened to them talk. Mm hmm Yeah. And then when she, when that person would leave, she would tell us, don't fool with that person anymore. Mm. I'm sure what she said. And if a man take the time to cock his hat, you don't want him. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because he was too in love with himself. Oh. Okay. When he's standing in the mirror, see, Daddy or my uncles, they just put the hat on and went on. Mm -hmm. But when a man stand there and, you know, and, and cock it, nah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we have this all stirred up, and now we have our poultry, our chicken. Yeah, you're just going to put it in there. Place just, it in. just place it in there. Yeah, you don't stir kinda, it. Kind of tuck and hide it. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Don't, don't, I don't, okay, leave that hole like yes. that. Yes. And then I'm just going to tuck it down in there like yes. that. Yes. Well, amen. Just take your hands and go ahead on and put it in there. It's a big piece. Leave that? No, leave that. Okay. Because when it all cooks together mm -hmm. and you spoon it, mm -hmm. it's going to come up a spoonful. Oh, okay. So you want, so this is a uh, light and uh, white uh, and dark meat, guys. This is breast and thigh and When it gets that leg. dressing taste in, in, that, in that chicken, mm -hmm. you won't care whether it's black or white. <laughs> That's the thing about being black and white. If you get it right, it all tastes good. And that's the truth. That's the way life should be. That's good. That's good wisdom. Yeah. That's I'm going to break stuff. this one up just because I want to see it. Because it was too big. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes I just put the whole piece of chicken in there, you know? Yeah, so I remember as a kid, we would scoop up dressing. It would be a whole chicken leg. Yeah, because y'all you know? had to eat. Yeah. And that and was after eating a whole bowl of, a bowl of cornbread and milk, mm -hmm. standing around watching me cook. Mm -hmm. And that's a tip for any of my mommies out there who maybe have to stretch your, stretch your pot this Thanksgiving because of finances. Break your chicken up or your turkey up and put it down into the dressing. And that will stretch it so that, you know, everybody everybody is well fed. Now take your spoon and just pat the dress, pat the chicken on down in there. Just put it on it. down in there. Yeah, put it in there. Pat, pat it down in there. Yes. Okay. Ready I don't know anything about somebody else liking my dressing until I made it at church. And then they kept saying, oh, make some more dressing. And then I got all nervous and paranoid, you know, because... I, you know, I didn't know. The expectation is different when you're yeah. making it because somebody asked you as opposed to you just getting in your kitchen and cooking for your family. And when I first started working in the church, uh, working in the church kitchen, because mm -hmm. that's a different kind of kitchen, the church kitchen. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you learn a whole bunch of stuff in the church kitchen. I tell you, that'd be better than the service in the sanctuary. <laughs> church kitchen is serious, honey. It can take you to hell or it can take you to hell. Oh, Lord. <laughs> anyway. Sister B. Harvey and I was just, I would just be washing the dishes, you know, oh, just Sister helping out. Harvey, I Sister love B. Sister B. Harvey, she's the best cooker in the telling. And so I was saying, she would ask me to do this and I said, uh, do that. And I said, but I don't know how to cook for a lot of folks. And one day she got kind of upset with me. She says, yes, you do. All them babies you got. <laughs> she said, shade. <laughs> we call that shade. <laughs> so, I, so she says, all you have to do to cook for a lot of people is add more salt and pepper. And that's really all you have to do. Mm -hmm. To that's cook good. for a bunch of people is add more salt and pepper. That's, that's it. Good. That's good. Now, how long do we bake this? Do we bake it covered or uncovered? Oh, uncovered because uncovered. you want to get a brown crust on the top, just like that cornbread has a brown crust. Mm -hmm. That's the way you want your dressing, to have a brown crust on it. Okay. And you don't want it soupy. You okay. want it, you know, nice. So when you pour that gravy over it, mm, that's why you need that gravy. Mm -hmm. Because the gravy gives you that extra moisture that you need from almost dry dressing. It's not dry, dry, mm -hmm. but that's it. So, I mean, it's like, how long would you bake this size pan? 45 minutes. 45 minutes to an hour? 
or until mm -hmm. it's golden, golden and it's not round and it's not jiggly in the center. Exactly. You don't want to be jiggly in the center. So now, would you stir this halfway? Oh or just no, leave it? no, no! You gonna okay. leave that alone? Just leave it. Okay. And then you just, know, and just let it go. And let it go, and, and just just cook it. All right. So we're gonna bake this for about forty-five minutes, and we will see you back in a few minutes. All right. We are back, and it's been so. We kept checking it at the 45 minute mark. We checked it, it wasn't quite ready. So I added another 15 minutes. It still wasn't quite ready. So we added another 10 minutes and that. But at 400, do you need to boost it? Oh, so I changed the temperature, that's right. So it was at 350 for 45 minutes. Oh, it was at 350. It was at 350. Yes, I thought I, I was supposed to be 375 and I didn't realize it until I came to the oven. So then I bumped it up to 400 for another um, like 20, 25 minutes and that that did it. So look at it, it's beautiful. It's beautiful golden brown, has a nice crust on top. It's not jiggly. See, it's completely cooked through. So we're just gonna take a little corner. We don't need a lot because this is what we're gonna, we're gonna let this uh, cool off completely. But a good way as to test it is with the fork right in the center. Fork right in the center? Yeah, okay. and then you can test it right in there to see if it's juicy, too juicy. Too, yes. And that's, so you can easily cover that back up. Yeah. You never know you were in there. So we're gonna taste this. And I'm not gonna eat the chicken part, I'm just gonna eat the dressing part. It was very hot, we just took it out of the oven. The bell peppers, the onions, the celery, everything is cooked through. Everything is soft. And each of those things are lending their wonderful flavor to this dressing. It's good. And it's, since we're going to, uh, they don't know that we're gonna freeze this. Yes, so we're gonna let this cool completely and then we're gonna wrap it really tightly in foil and saran wrap and then foil again. Uh, and then so, freeze it. Still a little moist, but what's gonna happen when we reheat the whole thing, mm -hmm. that's going to be enough. And so I would reheat this at uh, 400. At 400 for mm -hmm. about how long? About 30 minutes? Well, you know what? I've about never done minutes. it frozen. you never done it frozen? <laughs> mm -hmm. So play around with it. Everybody's oven is different. Try it at three. Start at 350. Mm -hmm. So do 375. 375? Mm -hmm. Okay. So 375 to reheat it. And start with 25 minutes, because you know it, it'll be frozen. So start with 25 minutes. See, make sure that it's hot all the way through. If it's not hot, you know, do it in 10 minute increments because you definitely don't want it to dry out. All right? Oh, this is so good. It, isn't it so good? So don't yeah. forget to subscribe to my channel, Good Girl She's with Tiffany, and hit that bell notification so that you'll know when I post new mm. videos. See, that chicken. Mm -hmm. The flavoring has gone into that chicken. Mm -hmm. mm, mm, mm. I thank you, God, for life. <laughs> that crust. I know the crust is delightful. I hope that you add this to your Thanksgiving table. It's good. It's a simple, easy recipe. It's an inexpensive recipe. Stay tuned for my plant-based, gluten-free dressing. That'll be coming up. Uh, that would be nice. <laughs> But you don't want no parts of that? Um, mm -mm. Mm -hmm. I will taste it though. I'm gonna taste it. I'm about new stuff. Okay. I said, right. I'll taste it. Yeah, bring some new stuff to the table. All right. Mm -hmm. So three of her kids, we are uh, we are eating plant-based um, diets, or mostly plant-based. By choice. By choice. For health reasons and other things. But she's old school. She wants some beef. I have to have a steak. A steak? Mm-hmm. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. God bless all.